Hi everyone, Hanin Nua Omaeda here. Today I want to talk about the secret history by Donald Tart. The book opened up with a body being found. It belonged to someone named Bunny and was only found after days of being hidden by the snow. The narrator Richard and someone named Henry are partially responsible for the murder. We are then further introduced to Richard Pepin. He grew up in Plano and came from a poor and loveless family. Instead of studying to become a doctor so the responsibility of living generational poverty can be left to him, he chooses to study English literature instead because of his talent in learning Greek. He then randomly chose to go to Hampstead just because he liked how the place looks in the brochure, despite having to fight for being able to go there because it is not cheap and he is poor. Though such a thing as the fatal flaw that shows dark crack running down the middle of a life exists outside literature. I used to think it didn't. No, I think it does. And I think that mine is this, a morbid longing for the picturesque at all costs. Hampstead is a weird place to go study well. I guess most colleges are a weird place to go to. The teachers are weirdly competitive and one teacher in particular, Julian Morrow, who teaches Greek which is Richard's best subject, only accepted 5 students at a time and teaches there basically for free. The 5 students are Henry Winter, Edmund Bunny Corcoran, two that we have previously known, Francis Abernathy, and then the twins Charles and Camilla Macaulay. All of them very interesting set of characters. I was confused by this sudden glare of attention. It was as if the character in a favorite painting absorbed in their own concern, had looked up out of the canvas and spoken to me. And after some events, Pepin managed to join the class. And here we know more about the other five students as they learn about the Greeks, art, and philosophy. They talk about Homer, Aristotle, Plato, the Greek, Romans, and their art and culture. All five of the students, and even Julian the teacher, actually come from a kind of well-off family, which makes our main character Richard have to wriggle his way to fit in with them. A lot of lying about where he came from and what he can do because he felt inferior and insecure about his past. Somehow he fit in with them and found friendship and companionship, although it's not long to see that they have secret. The only one that's transparent is the self-centered bunny. It's a person who came from old money where the old money have dried out and there is no new money because honest working is beneath him. But he is a Raskolnikov, someone whose meanness is dragged out further out by his conscience on concealing his friend's murder. And when Bunny started to unravel, they all designed a plan to kill him and enacted them. Or perhaps they weren't so inexplicable as that, because the worst thing about all of this, as Camilla once remarked, was not that Bunny had suffered some total change of personality, some schizophrenic break, but rather that various unpleasant elements of his personality, which heretofore we had only glimpsed, had orchestrated and magnified themselves to a startling level of potency. Distasteful as his behavior was, we had seen it all before, only in less concentrated and vitriolic form. And that was only halfway through the story, which we already know since it was mentioned at the start of the book. Then there was the reception of Bunny Dead that became larger and larger because various set of circumstances. Then the aftermath of everything, how Bunny's death changed everything and the secret that each of his friends have, their flaws and words all started to come out. It was this unreality of character, this cartoonishness if you will, which was the secret of his appeal and what finally made his death so sad. Like any great comedian, he colored his environment wherever he went. In order to marvel at his constancy, he wanted to see him in all sort of alien situations. Bunny riding a camel. Bunny babysitting. Bunny in space. Now, in death, this constancy crystallized and became something else entirely. He was an old familiar jokester cast with surprising effect in the tragic role. The story is told solely through Richard's perspective. Since he is one of the culprit, we only got his own biased view of the world that are not always reliable. A lot of the events in the book need to be read between the lines because he liked his friends, he liked his teachers the most, and he kinda need to protect himself. But the way his narration is written is such a delight to read. He made everything seem so beautiful, even the mundane of everyday life. Though at the time I found those dinners wearing and troublesome, now I find something very wonderful in my memory of them. That dark cavern of a room, with folded ceilings and a fire crackling in the fireplace, or faces luminous somehow and ghostly pale. The firelight magnified our shadows, glinted off the silver, 
flickered high upon the walls. Its reflection wrote orange in the window panes as if a city were burning outside. The whoosh of the flame was like a flock of birds, trapped and beating in a whirlwind near the ceiling. And I wouldn't have been at all surprised if the long mahogany banquet table, draped in linen, laden with china and candles and fruit and flowers, had simply vanished into thin air, like a magic casket in a fairy story. This is such a great story. The characters are well written and complex in a situation that are wholly unique. It's an interesting detective genre disconstruction where we are the murderer. It's a who done it but in reverse. And it captures the sense of cold indifference to them, especially the callous disregard some of these people have towards people's life. Or more specifically, a poor people's life. Even from Richard himself, who are, you know, poor. But the author did this without making them cartoonishly villain. They're such an interesting character study. The story itself has the same complexity to their characters, there are a lot of them, there is under different layer of them you can peel off from the plot point. Every character will have their own conclusive arc in the story that makes sense in the story of this book, even if it might not be the what the reader what us would prefer. Which is good because that's how well flesh this book is. This book is what happened if the great Gatsby and crime and punishment have a beautiful child that everyone is jealous of. If you haven't realized it yet, I really like the book and I highly recommend it. That's about it.